I will do the presentation on living wages. And if you um, can show me the next slide and you can see how huge the living wage team is already, because it's it's not only Akash, which is also assumed by a man, but he's fixing sheets as well. It's Danny, it's Martin, it's it's Mare, it's uh, Sam, it's Ria, um, it's Kabir, it's Yen, it's Ni, and uh, well, Rupa is all the time involved in all kinds of issues of contracts and, and invoices and so. So that whole team together, uh, what do they do? They start the recruiting is a, is a part of the system of the of the living wage team. So it's recruiting and training for data collection. Then it's collecting, collecting a hell of a lot of data every quarter. Collecting is done by um, over 100 people um, a quarter and by 30 people around the world who do it by foot. Then uh, maintenance is done by our IT team. Um, improved the survey is done ongoing. But a special project is there with uh, with Mare. Uh, she studies in Bangalore and she's improving the whole re regional structure of uh, the wage indicator system. She's improving it, especially, of course, for the cost of living uh, survey and data collect or, or calculation in the end. Then there is cleaning and calculating. Uh, that is Martin and um, Lucia and me. That is a, a quite a, a complex uh, work, but it's going well. Then there is a reflection. We have a reflection team. Well, you can say is the team of brains. Martin and Martin, Danny, Kea, Martin, um, Samuel, Murray, me, Rob, Pauline. So all uh, people who keep on reflecting on what we're doing on related to living wages, whether that's good or not. Next to that, we have a team who's checking it before it is presented to all our customers. And um, it's after present, it's selling the data that's that's it's selling, it's making this circle around. So it's not only um, bringing it to the client, but also finding new clients. And we have the coordination. That's what the, the living wage team is doing. Team is expanding because the team makes money. Um, can you have a next slide? Um, you see here that we collect, we started collecting living wage data in um, 2014, with, then we had four, uh, uh, 45 countries. At this moment, we have April 2022, uh, we have 129 countries, and uh, we think we can go in 2030 to 200 countries, which means then not only the minimum wage database has 200 countries, but also the living wage database has 200 countries. We think that's possible to, to go there by having a combined way of data collection, partly scraping um, and partly by foot combined with um, and, and telephone calls, WhatsApp calls, um, and of course, web shops. Web shops has been done over the last couple of years. It works. And now we will improve at both sides. So uh, more scraping on the other side, more smart, um, close to face-to-face -to -face, um, uh, surveying. Thank you. This is, um, can you have the next slide? Hello, yep. So you see that we expanded 229 countries which where we can deliver, deliver um, data every quarter at the moment. And if you look at our clients, then um, it's interesting to see what they, which country uh, countries they want to know and, uh, about what is the living wage in that country. And of course, they need to know that because they have a factory there or they have work there or an office or whatever. In most of the cases, we still talk about uh, companies with their work, their own workers there. So not, uh, let's say, not something in the supply chain that comes after. First, first is, if you see this map, then the most interesting thing is that uh, US, um, India, um, Spain and uh, Italy are, uh, let's say, the countries where most, by far, most of our, our clients uh, want to know what is the living wage, which is cool to, to see, I would say. Then, obviously, China is um, important, Turkey is important, Mexico, Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Japan, Poland, France, UK are important. And Brazil, we were uh, expecting much more, but uh, Brazil seems to be less important. But Egypt within Africa is important, South Africa and Ghana. Then uh, less Nigeria, to our surprise, but um, that might still come. 
Um, okay, then that is for these colors. That's it's an orange, blue, green is for um, these companies who need a hell of a lot of living wages. Next to that, um, we have clients who go for any other country in the world. And that is, for instance, um, Doctors Without Borders. They go, they focus in their 35 countries on the most complex one, uh, whether it's in Yemen or um, uh, Venezuela. This is, of course, also Ukraine, but also uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia. Um, we team up a lot with uh, Doctors Without Borders, not without a reason. They are in countries, difficult countries. We are too. So we, we uh, work together. There is another. Um, let's say oh, it's not a, a foundation, but a company, Maersk. And they are in so many countries in the world that they make our map of where the clients are a bit more yellow because in any port, um, there is an office of Maersk. Then uh, next to that, it's interesting to see that Canva, Canva is the online design tool, is also in many, many countries in the world. And then, um, Data collection for minimum wages is in 107 or living wages in 177 countries. Um, Greenland and Mongolia are up to list on, on the list now, and Russia and Belarus are, uh, for obvious reasons, out of the list. Um, in terms of regions, you can say we we are not yet complete, but um, two thirds of the countries uh, we cover in that term. So um, this is what where we are. Can you have, can we have the next slide? Um, roughly we have 100, 100 clients. Of these clients, um, one third takes an annual um, database, two thirds takes a smaller database and a smaller database means less than um, uh, 33 regions, which is still substantial by the way. And, um, um, our clients are everywhere in all sectors, in, truly in all sectors, uh, mainly multinationals. If it's, these multinationals are based either in Europe or the US, um, just a few in Hong Kong, but not that many. Um, and if it comes to uh, NGOs, Doctors Without Borders, Fairware, uh, Social Economical Council are, um, let's say, the nonprofits ones. Um, and if you uh, deal with living wages, you deal with impact. Uh, we think, or theoretically, you can think that we have a lot of impact. Um, but the truth is that we don't know. And uh, most of the companies or most of the clients we have don't know either because they use our database uh, first to check what is the situation in their organization, whether they have a big uh, uh, gap between what they pay and what they should pay uh, with a living wage. So uh, fundamentally, we don't know exactly. Then um, what we more or less know is that most of the client or the clients use it, of course, for their annual report. Some clients uh, know already that from next year onwards, they want to pay the living wages. So they have serious um, living wage policies. Um, and there is just one client who said, well, we need your living wage for all our, um, for the suppliers, for our suppliers, which means then we have all of a sudden a hell of a lot of um, small clients. And, um, thank you. Um, can we have the next slide? Um, so, and if you, well, you know that clients like to have living wage and to, to say it blunt, most of the clients want the living wage data. Uh, some say, well, give me living wage, but I also need the minimum wage because then finally I understand how it works. And some of them say, well, give me also the labor law information and labor rights index, because then I understand what is the risk if I don't pay um, the minimum wage, what is, um, well, or basically what is the risk? And one of the clients, for instance, wants to have a combination of living wage, minimum wage and labor rights index. And on that basis, they understand that, for instance, a country as, uh, as Myanmar is for a couple of reasons problematic. The labor law is problematic, but also in the minimum wage is so low that uh, finally the, the gap between minimum wage and living wage is huge. So when you start to have a business in Myanmar, you you start to start actually already with with problems. And um, okay, so these are the darlings: one, two, three, living wage, minimum wage, labor rights index, darlings of clients, um, the darling of funders, 
is the collective agreement database. I really like that. And uh, this image will show you um, in how many countries our databases are. And as you know, if you go into the deep machine of, uh, of the wage indicator, it becomes a bit nerdy. And then, um, can you have the next slide? Our challenges, let's say challenges for the living wage um, team. Um, bluntly, always more data, more and more and more data. Um, and more data means less spikes, thank God. Um, tricks to do better scraping. Um, more, we do it already, but better and more scraping of uh, data. Um, finally, because we are in the process of um, publishing all our living wages, so not selling, but publishing it, but then funding to fund the couple of hundred data collectors we have ongoing um, to, well, to, to pay them, because it would be a bit odd to have a, many data collectors uh, collecting data for living wages, but are not paid themselves. So we would like to have that. And, um, and uh, our challenge is to fix a web portal where we share um, the, the living wages and sheets. Partly they can be sold and partly they are shared with, um, well, many, many students from many, uh, many academics. They don't pay, but at least they, um, they, pre they, they present it again. And these are our partners always. Thank you. This is a challenge and now the future. Um, the future, I won't read this, but the future is um, a set of activities which we would like to do the coming couple of months and then over the coming couple of years. Basically, it's, it's uh, smarter data collection, but also knowing more, for instance, about is there childcare, is there healthcare in the country? And then we would like to know that not for a few countries, but preferable for all 200 countries and to make sure that we can include that on a proper way in, um, in the a living wage benchmark. Same counts for um, uh, all related to platform economy uh, jobs. Jobs like riders or uh, taxi drivers. We know from a, a couple of countries already um, how to do that, how to calculate that, 35 countries, by the way. But we would like to do that for all countries in the world to have a, a proper living living tariff, uh, a minimum living tariff. And, uh, so that's uh, an, an issue. And of course, understand more prices um, by um, bureaus of statistics compared with what we do, etc. That type of research we're dreaming of. And um, outside our organization, um, so that's something we can't steal completely, are two processes going on. One is publication of living wages in an independent source or independent website. Um, and another is to come to more standardization of living wages. The next slide. And in the next slide, you see a report. Uh, well, you see the FAQ, data availability, of course, minimum wages, data visual, um, and the report. The link to that report is the link to the latest report uh, we made, and that is from um, end of February this year, with way more information than the information which we uh, gave at this moment. So that's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>